lock that down. There's a lot of champions that could be picked up here. I mean, we still have Lux available. I keep pointing that out because she's such a strong champion. That burst can never go underestimated. But SK, I mean, what can they really go for here? Shen is still available if they want to pick it up. We saw how, I mean, we, we saw how it didn't work out for Evil Genesis in the beginning with the jungle Shen. But just like uh, just like yesterday, the jungle Shen worked out like after six. Like he was such a, a, a huge force. Yeah, and I'm wondering what SK are going to go with here for first pick. Because you've got the likes of Zed, Kha'Zix, Shen, all wow, Elise. Yeah. Still all those four champions right there, and you've got two picks. So at the end of the day, they're still going to be left open for EG. Thresh was, of course, their first pick after uh, Krepo did land some fantastic hooks in that last one. Also, Kale is open. I don't believe Froggen plays too much of him, and usually SK tends to pick the mid, uh, mid laner last. But we, like, as we're saying in the pregame, like his stats on Kale, five games, four wins, is pretty strong. Yeah. But looks like they do lock in the Vars and do lock in the Shen. So it looks like we will have Kevin on Shen potentially in the top lane. And just like you said before, Zed left open, Frog, and we, we saw him yesterday on it. Just it's, he's just, he's just, he's just damn good at any champion he plays, but he really shows it with the Zed. I'd imagine now that EG aren't going to lock in a possible mid or top laner. They're going to leave that until their last pick and keep EG guess, uh, keep SK guessing from this one. Uh, but they've got last pick, so SK, as you'd expect, they're probably going to leave their mid lane until last anyway. So that Kale will be left open. And we've always said that you know Ocelot, we can, he can play Kale very well and. Kale's a very good counter yeah. to what I, not a full counter, obviously, because Zed is ridiculously strong, but it's probably as good as it gets to counter in Zed. Yeah, I mean, we talk about this all the time, like we're in the analysis test to each other, just like, you know, we see Zed locked in, why not pick Kale? You eliminate his ultimate, you force your AD carry to potentially not have to take barrier or take, take like some sort of really heavy defensive summoner, and you can shut him down. Also, I mean, if you run, you know, some sort of attack damage, uh, runes, or maybe some flat armor or flat armor pen, flat magic pen on Kale, you can push Zed out of lane so easily if you can just hit him a couple of times. And that always is a possibility, but SK, I mean, look at them. They're really thinking this through. Like, they want to take yeah. this game. They want to bring it to a three-game series because they want that third place. Well, the thing is, for SK, they finished third in the LCS Spring Split. So... The fact is, they want third here. They want to prove that they throughout to those there. 28 games, they've deserved that spot as well. So there's another thing in that as well. Uh, we are going to see the Snoop Dogg here in the jungle for <laughs> Evil Geniuses. Obviously, Nasus locked in there for Snoopy. That left Elise open again. It looks like we will see that as a pickup again for Nif. So it looks like we will have that misfortune over going over to Yellow Peep. Uh, usually, you know, misfortunately, she's one of those safe champions to pick against a Nasus. But since you've locked in Varsh right away, you, you're allowed to be countered with this. Um, but I mean, with that uh, that not jungle at least, with the support at least we saw out of Nif, it, it did its 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 job. Like the cocoons he landed, he missed a couple, but the ones he hit were always perfect, and it really set them up for some kills. As we have Kevin, looks like yet again could be going on this Renekton. So now they have their top lane to pick, and they can counter it in any way they want to. So it will be that Renekton locked in there. Evil geniuses on their last two picks, and what are they going to go in for you? Just see whether they're going to play safe. I mean, they don't have really anything to risk at this point. They're one to zero up in the series. They're on that blue side, which does. I mean, if you just take the statistics from the playoffs, it's ridiculously favorable. Um, so we'll see what they end up locking in here. Thresh support, Snoopy in the jungle with Nasus. So AD carry wise, what are we thinking? The thing is, well. I think it's going to be misfortune, but the Zed can also be played on Wicked, I just remembered. Like, Froggen plays it, so does Wicked. So well, that was my point mid as, to why, in. as to why EG would leave that right, to right. last a, a top or a mid laner, because there you go. it leaves SK guessing, and they are going to be going towards Lux here it has by to be Lux a Kale. things. It has to be a Kale coming out of SK now. If they lock in at Lux, like, you're going to counter the double ultimates out of the Evil Geniuses. And, I mean, not, not to talk bad about Candy Panda, but we've seen him in the past, like in week one and two, where he would just get caught by Light Binds and blown up instantly. Yeah. So it gives him that extra protection. It gives his team that little bit of pseudo tankiness because they already have quite a bit of damage, quite a bit of tankiness on top of that. I think Kale would perfectly fit in this combo. Well, let's see if SK think the same. Obviously, Ocelot does have his playbook there, which I'm sure is full of all kinds of secrets. And uh, I don't know, maybe one day when he retires, he'll release that book, you know, make millions from it, as, as sports stars do in the end, along with his autobiography as well. Uh, but Ari, hopefully actually. that's a few years away. Let's see then. We might even see Ari potentially come out of him. I'm a very mobile champ, so he won't really get locked down too easily by Lux. Oh, okay, so you might want to go with an Orianna here, but, you know, okay, well, we've seen how good an Orianna can be if you hit the ultimates, but we've also seen how you can lose a game because of it. You know, against all Warriors Gamma game, I'm thinking of in particular, where Shleia just did a phenomenal job on Orianna the entire time, but that one missed ultimate at the end caused him to lose the game. And we've seen also, actually, Gamescom. I mean, I keep, I keep thinking about that. Well, yeah, uh, such I was going to say, let's, job let's on, look at Gamescom. Let's look at the best of three series that qualified SK Gaming for this LCS against EG or CLG EU as they were back then. 
And those kills that we saw from Ocelot around Baron, for example, that's one <laughs> thing that really comes to mind with the Ocelot Oriana. With how, see if it can do that today, though. With how loud the entire room was that day, you could still hear Ocelot screaming over everyone when he made that Oriana play because he knew he caught, like he got Baron, got the triple kill. He knew he got his team into season and in, into season three. So that's just how passionate, how good he is on Oriana. Wicked's doing a dance. I think he's DJing or something <laughs> there. Pretty interesting, uh, uh, you know. If you're tall, you can't dance generally as well, Jason. You could, I, I, you, I have seen this. you try to dance, I can say. Not that me as a shorter person can dance any better, but <laughs> seems like Wicked suffers the tall man's dancing curse. I've only got like two moves, Joe. And they're both rubbish. I they're know, I've terrible. seen them. Yeah. <laughs> so we are going to get into game then. Last match, we saw craziness at level one. Should we expect that here again? Yes, I would expect it. Because I mean, we, we, I mean, in the video, that's all, all I keep going back to is we heard Niff say, we have some prepared for Evil Geniuses. There's something we want to sh we want to show them and surprise them with. And we saw them do it in the last game. And I'm assuming they would have a similar strategy on the red side. So this bait right here, this whole setup of men in the bush and one man as bait is happening? what caught Wicked out yep. against Gambit, yeah. I want to say, earlier on in the season. Yeah, it was Diamond Prox on Sin Chao who yep. was doing the baiting from that one. This time, though, they're going to land the hook on towards Kevin. There's a cocoon from the side. Frogan going low. His first blood coming out here for Candy Panda. Herkubot's burning away. Well, they're still going head to head. Actually, EG didn't really lose much health apart from Frogan, of course, who went down. <laughs> SK were all very low by the end of it. And what a crazy, crazy start again. And as you said, we can expect it, and we did see an SK again get that first blood. And just thinking back to what we are talking about, Nip on the Elise, just such a phenomenal job. That cocoon catching Frog, and of all people, and when they were grouped up, was just so sublime, able to pick up that first one, and they got it over to Candy Panda. He's coming back to lane with boots on top of that Doran's Blade and a Hell Pot, so he's going to have an extreme advantage, and it looks like they will be going top lane, so they will be 2v1 against Wicked on his Zed. Yeah, I think that start from Nif that couldn't have been better, Jason. Start here for the golems on the bottom side of the map for Evil Geniuses. Wicked and Frogan doing the wolves. Did Freak get a British accent or something? <laughs> That's like he's here right now. But yeah, I mean, that, it's still, it couldn't have been better. It was so spot on by them. And it's shown the SK, like we were saying before, like they shrugged up the last game. Not really a, a whole lot to analyze other than the Baron fight. And they'll come into this game like it's a fresh new, uh, fresh new series. So, red buff start here for Herkiewot Shen. Got plenty of help from Candy Panda and Nif, and we are going to be seeing 2v1 lanes this time around. Candy Panda and Nif up in the top against Wicked Zed, and in the bottom lane, Thresh Misfor Misfortune. Thresh Misfortune. Uh, against <laughs> Irish Renekton. accent coming up. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit there. You know, I know you're going to ask me who has the better time in the 1v2 situation, and I'm already ahead of you in this one. I think it's pretty even, actually. So Renekton, he has the sustain under turret, he has the AoE clear, but Wicked has the ability to see us from range. Because of the clone, because of that Q, you can hit these minions, you can clear them pretty quickly. Not to mention your passive mixed in with last scene under turret, it's going to have a really easy time. So, this come down to what team can shut down the, the solo player better. I mean, it's always that in, in this case, but they have to do it better. Like, if you keep Renekton out of the game, if you keep uh, Zed out of the game for quite a while, he won't become that powerful. He won't be able to one-shot anyone just yet. You delay that point where he hits that critical mass. It's Crepo taunting away at Kevin. And we did see Snoopy just doing the blue buff, and then he headed down towards the bottom side of the map again. So not getting involved in that top lane just yet to help out Wicked in that 2v1 situation. Nif doing a fantastic job, though, of zoning Wicked away from that experience. You know, I love seeing just how over time the meta's really changed in League of Legends because, you know, usually around this point, this 330 mark, you would always see these three-man ganks happen. Now it's kind of evolved into your jungler coming into your lane, just making sure this they don't get too much damage on the, onto the turret and you're able to get those levels and that CS under, uh, under your tower. It's just really cool to see how, like, quickly the meta does evolve in League of Legends. Yeah. I totally agree with that one, to the point where yesterday when we saw those three-minute ganks, it looks like both the teams weren't really prepared for them, even though they were both doing the same strategy, uh, which is something we used to see a lot of, but not so much at this point. There's Candy Panda and Nif putting down some pressure onto the top turret, and Snoopy's actually coming in towards Oriana here in the middle lane, but in the end, will get away from things. Did get the wither down, but wasn't close enough to get the damage in. And look what we have, you know, already started. Wicked has 13 CS to the 7 of Kevin, and he's doing a great job just getting that CS as much as possible in lane, though Kevin, he's going to catch up very shortly here. He's already being forced to pop a lot of these health pots, but he does have a red pop. He does get dove under, and of course, you know, Herkibot, he's just sticking by the side. He's just making sure he doesn't get harassed too much because you see Kevin's level 2 right now when Wicked's already level 3. And that also means Herkibot will be 6 quicker, so he'll be, be able to interact a lot faster. 
trying to keep the farm underneath the turret there as well. Candy Pen here putting down a good few auto attacks on towards Wicked. Throws down the Hail of Arrows as well. Snoop is still waiting in this middle area. So Ocelot didn't burn his flash early on. We can say that from the, uh, the little encounter that we saw. There is the Wither going down once again. Actually, the Light Binding will land here onto Ocelot. This is going to be a lot of damage. Probably won't be the finisher unless the E lands, which he does. And the oh. final tick will get the kill. What a play out of Evil Geniuses. That was so perfectly calculated out of them right there. That was just, wow, so phenomenal. And we're seeing what Evil Geniuses did back in the first first game where Snoopy, he's not farming as much, but he's sitting at the lanes. He's trying to make sure that they can get a gank and get a kill off just so they can snowball their own lanes. And it's working out for them. Yeah, real nice play. And as you said, calculation there as Herkubot is going to get hooked in here, but should be safe from the uh, damage. Not going to be too much coming out onto him at this point in the game. And with having Renekton there, we wouldn't have seen Crepo diving in after landing the um, hook as well. Hello Pete, of course. With that single Doran's Blade, also not exactly the damage machine to pick up kills onto two relatively tanky members there. As they do back off, Crepo just spotted that as he went into the brush. You know, I'm just thinking back to the Copenhagen games where Froggen was playing his Lux quite a bit. You just saw like the highlight reel of every laser hitting. It was just ridiculous getting even some flying du double kills. And, and he's I, just landed one there yeah. on our slot. And I, I'm just, I mean, I'm just afraid for SK because Froggen is just so outstanding on this Lux. When he starts to interact with the other lanes, he can just blow you up quickly. And getting that first, or not first one, getting that kill over to him early on like that, is just going to make it even harder for SK to deal with. Yeah, I agree with you with that one as well. I mean, that was, Froggen's such a hard person to ban out. I mean, Anivia, obviously, you go to that and then you leave Lux open. He can, he can do a similar job, if not even better, because, you know, he'd stop practicing Anivia for quite a while right. because he just didn't get her. So why even bother going in there for the practice? So very much a dangerous pick there. As we are going to see Yellow uh, Pete getting the ward down. That's something we see, I'd say, out of EG more than any other team there is Wicked. He's just going to catch Nifu, who will come down right on top of him <laughs> once again. They're trying to get rid of the wards, and he's going to get exhausted here. Candy Panda going to come in from the side. Is he going to be forced to flash? Yes, he is. Nice little burn of that summoner spell from SK's point. They didn't even want to fight there. They're just like, no, I want your ward before you can kill mine, but I get kill each other simultaneously right there. As you see, uh, Rikiba is waiting on the top side. Kevin has a big wave pushed up under his turret, but he's still relatively healthy at this point. He has the health group or the health crystal and the red pop available if he does need the extra health. And we're seeing the Cage's lucky pick plus a Tia coming back in there for looks. That's how uh, that first kill has really helped out Frog. And with three men in this top lane, Snoopy's going to have to get in there quickly if they're going to save this one. And with the health position that it's currently at, I'd say there's. Not much chance of them keeping that turret alive. And now Snoopy in there, maybe in trouble as the taunt does land actually onto Wicked in the end. Is he going to be able to get away? Will you use your Living Shadow to get on the other side? Nif comes in on the top of him. Candy Panda snipes him down for the kill. Nicely done, SK. You know, look at that. I'm just like, why was he sticking around? Because we saw him actually flash over that wall over towards the jungle by the blue camp. Uh, when he got attacked earlier, it just seemed like there was no real need for that. But still, great job by SK to capitalize on that. Cocoon and Taunt landing perfectly and able to get that kill over to Kenny Pan, who's now 2-0. And now Snoopy's getting caught. I have no idea why Snoopy just got in there as well. Good job he's got the light binding coming out of Frogger because I think that would have been the death of him there. There's a Repel coming in. The piercing arrow not quite sniping um, Snoopy. But SK have got the positioning here on the blue buff. And look at... Oh, actually, where'd that go? Where is it? I don't know Herky if it was... Bot okay. It. I wasn't sure right there. Uh, but now look what uh, Evil Genius is doing. They're taking away the blue buff from SK right now. It's uh, that ward that Yellow Pete put down. And they should be able to get that over to Froggen, which is going to be very, very needy. Lux is going to need that cool reduction, that extra mana regen. Yeah. And on top of that, Tyr going to get that stack very quickly. Needs one more auto attack here to get that one finished off, which has actually given them time to get in from this. The hook did land there on towards Kevin. Herkubot gets hit with the light binding. And they are running for dear life now. There are four men coming in there. He's Kevin getting right on top of him. Shen's going to get involved as well. Crepo is going to be forced to flash, but the cocoon lands. All the damage going to be enough to finish him. It's Kevin that gets that one. And that should be a dragon as well on top of that. SK just playing so well. I mean, this is what we saw them in, in the first game, but then they, that Baron obviously turned it around and just, just wow. We talked about SK. Like when they're on form, they can beat anyone in the world. And they're showing it right here that they are just an amazing team. The dragon give them a nice chunk of extra gold. And now I'm curious to see what's going to happen. Are SK going to send their AD carry support bot lane to go against the uh, AD carry support of Evil Jesus, or are they still going to try to punish Wicked in the top lane? Well, the fact is that their AD carry Candy Pan has got two kills here. He's got Cutlass, he's got the Dagger, Boots, and Adoran's Blade in there, which Misfortune can't really compare to right, right now. So. 
putting that 2v1, uh, 2v2 lane together again would probably be beneficial for SK. And then also you look at Kevin. I mean, he's 101 and he has a chain vest, but he's 28 CS right now. So he's down quite a bit in terms of that. And overall gold, he's down. Actually, he's not even down. He's actually ahead by like four or five gold at this point. So it actually was reasonable for him to go up to the top. And I was a little bit scared that he was too far behind, but the gold proved me wrong. Yeah, Repo here. You can see his health bar has been growing here considerably. He, that is because he does have the uh, Ruby side. Uh, go on, Jason. Take it away. He does have the side stone, yes. Thank like, you very much. Because we talked about earlier uh, in the last <laughs> game, Krepo doesn't like to build much GP10 anymore. He goes for the side stone, goes for a, a locket, actually even goes for a giant spell into a randoms eventually. And that just kind of shows how he likes to build his order. Like, he likes to control the early mid game with, these war with his war coverage, not really looking towards the late game. And, it, I mean, it, it really makes him tanky. Like, look how much health he has. Just like you point out, in that lane, it's really hard to take him down. Yep. Although, Nif does have that as well over on the other side now. So once they uh, actually get themselves in there and see how this all works out. I mean, Candy Panda, we criticized him a little bit yesterday for, um, you know, those Chain of Corruptions, which right. were really... And I'm sure he's, he won't be too unhappy with the save. They just weren't there. They just weren't there for him yesterday. Then we saw Genja playing it, and it was almost the opposite yeah. in terms of statistics, I think, in uh, you know, a, a hit and a miss ratio. Wicked is actually coming down into this bottom lane now, so we'll see how that one goes. Canyon Panda, of course, is level 7, so does have that chain of corruption to go in there, but Wicked is also level 7, as we are going to see them get in there for the play. The box goes down. There's the Repel coming out. This chain of corruption will land, but the bullet time is on Nif. Can they get the finish here? He is going to be burning from the Ignite, but not enough to get the kill. And that side stone working out for him right there. Keep him healthy enough, and they stop that gank from happening. In the meantime, Kevin's Ooh. push... Oh. Kevin's pushing the top, almost give you a heart attack right there. Kevin pushing the top lane, you know, much needed CS. As you see him catch up, he was about 30 behind, but now he's pretty much square even with Wicked. And that is exactly what SK did, or needed to do. Like, they stopped that gank from happening, and they capitalized on it by getting Kevin fed. Yeah, they did, of course, lose the tower, though, in the process, which not not the end of the world. It brings us back to 1-1 uh, in towers. Wicked just clearing out there on that top lane as well. He does have the Cutlass of his own. Along with those Boots Ward pots as well. And Crepo actually adding a Ruby Crystal in there, Jason. So finally, what I was trying to get out <laughs> earlier on will become a reality. Yes, it will. And it's going to give him, obviously, that extra bit of health. But we do have the Spirit of the Ancient Gold picked up on a Snoopy. So going for that very early on. And he's actually... I just want to check in real quick. Just see what he's leveling up. Because we've seen a lot change out of Nasus Junglers. He has four points in his E. And obviously one and one in his Q and W at this point. We've seen a lot of Junglers actually switch from leveling up their W, their Wither, to go for their Siphoning Strike. Uh, just get a little bit more damage. He's currently at plus 93 on it, so not a lot, but obviously we'll stack up as the game progresses. Well, it's 93 extra damage that you've got to factor into the fight. That's uh, one way to look at it as well. As we are going to see Krepo here spotted by Herkubot. Just walks in the jungle, stick to ward down. Okay, we've got your positioning on the tabs, and we can see there's a lot of wards down on this top side of the map already for EG as they start to close in on the top turret. They have a four man team coming up, squad coming up towards the top side. Froggen's there as well, and they will be a secure turret. So we talked about them taking that bomb turret. They're going to take another one. They're going to even up this gold lead and actually pretty much dead even at this point. That's a great job by them to realize that and capitalize off of it. And that's because of the wards that Krepp has been able to put down. Yeah, and just the single ward there that SK had actually scared them. Uh, scared the middle guys from coming up towards that top to defend it because they saw looks off towards the side. So really just showing that, you know, if you, even if you've, got, if you've got limited vision, sometimes it can actually throw you off as we are going to see the combo coming out there's the hook at the same time and nif doesn't even get time to respond you do not get to repel at all that's so well played by evil chances and if they keep that up like i said before if they get that early advantage then they're gonna have a composition that can just walk through sk and they're gonna take another turn off of this and that gives them a nice huge gold lead at this point dragon will be up in about a minute 40 seconds and i think we might see a team fight actually break out there where i think they will actually be able to win and that's how i deal with spiders in my house as well throw lasers and hooks all the way don't go near them with your hands. They're dangerous creatures. I just use my giant foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Jason. Well, I suppose it's better than nothing. Um, and the blue buff is going to be given over here, possibly towards Froggen. We've got Herkubot and Kevin coming around, although they were spotted by a ward here. Will they challenge for this one? The blue buff does go over to Froggen in the end, but he's going to get taunted up here by Herkubot. Froggen does have flash available, oh. which he will use perfectly there as Kevin comes over the top. Nicely done to get away with the blue wow. as well intact. Yes, that, that's the key point because he has Merlin Namakon already, so he's going to have that high amount of cooldown reduction and just 
That was insane because Snoopy smited it just so Froggen could get that get that blue buff. That was just wow, just so well played. I mean, just the escape as well. That flash was just like borderline too far out of range. That just shows you how much Froggen plays and how good he is. Makes me sad, but I can't be as good as him to be honest. Yeah, they're the ones that uh, if we tried them, they would end it in fail flashes and come on Reddit very quickly. <laughs> uh, right now, we are going to see the laser coming across the side here. The blue buff was still healthy, though. Wasn't stolen away, but EG are pretty committed to actually stealing it away in the end. And it is going to be taken by Wicked. Now, Hercubot having to shadow dash away. There's the shockwave. Actually caught three of them. Chain of Corruption came in as well. But look at that. SK using everything defensively there. The shockwave went in there and did nothing. No, it was a and, mare wave. We've talked about this one before, <laughs> uh, but it did the it did, you know the crowd control effect right, was right. what they needed in that situation. They were running away from it. Chain of corruption came in afterwards as well. So now it's two ultis burn and both defensively. Well, I was looking like why that it didn't do much damage because also it has an East Star rod, but Froggen with the ability power he has with his shield just mitigated all of it, and that's not yep. a good sign. I mean, SK does have a really good late game team because they will have the damage they need. They have the tankers they need, but it comes down to the fact that we keep mentioning. If Ocelot can hit these ultimates, they should have a chance in these fights. Right now, with that dragon just going down, we have a 2,000 gold lead for Evil Geniuses, which is... You know, they've done a great job to really claw back there. There's whole three, four-man roaming teams that have been taking down objectives, taking those towers in the top, the middle lanes, and, of course, the bottom lane. They did the same for that one as well. So, really, you know, it's, it's not the hardest concept to grasp either, that this whole, okay, bunch up, get the turret, then move, take the turret, move, take the turret. But SK have not been able to reply to that, to keep safe. I'm not sure if Krepa talked about this on the announcer's desk or just to me, but there's like a certain reason you do stuff like this. So if Candy Panda was freezing the lane, which he was at the bottom lane, it means you're going to have a 5v4 situation wherever you go. So if you go to a top lane, the top turret, you're either going to force Candy Panda to back out and defend it, where he's going to be losing CS, losing experience, or he's going to push that lane, you're going to get a free turret and be able to back in time to stop it. So it's just like counterplaying the strategy that SK is using, and it's just so perfectly well done. All right now, a 20 CS lead has reappeared in this top lane, by the way. We credited uh, the fact that SK managed to get Kevin back up there, almost level with Wicked, but Wicked now with that Blade of the Ruin King in, and the boots as well. He's at 20 CS lead. And in the middle lane, let's go through the items there, because that's where we're seeing the, the most completion, I guess we can say, with the Morel uh, Nomicon, always tough to get off my tongue, um, and the needlessly large rod, and the teal from early there with the Sork Shoes for Lux. Compare that over to you know, the makings of the Rabadon's death cap, but not a lot more, as we are going to see the laser coming in towards Ocelot here in the middle lane. Not quite enough damage for the kill, though. And you saw Herc, but actually ulti down towards the bottom lane, trying to go for a kill here, but Yuji was able to back away. But in the meantime, you can see SK push this middle turret. No one's there to defend it right now. Kevin's going to be coming in a little bit too late. Instead of oh. actually going for damage, they're going to try to go for a catch. They're going to try and sandwich them here. Nif is on top of a ward right now, but it's actually Hercubot who may find himself caught out. Does have a Shadow Dash, but he's going to have to use this wisely. As Wicked is now chasing him over the top. They know where Hercubot's going to be. Froggen is actually coming in from the top side. Miss Fortune from the bottom side. Hercubot needs to get basically on the fountain here. And look at this, Miss Fortune's gonna be backing from this one. Herkubot's running towards the fountain. Miss Fortune's gonna say auto attack. And Herkubot goes north now. Has he got away from this one? Nope, looks coming in from the side <laughs> and dies in the end to Yellow Peak. Good try, but the kill nonetheless going over to the AD carry, the first one of the game for Yellow Peak, but they've stalled here as well. And that's allowing SK to push the outer turret in yes. middle. That was the best out of a bad situation right there. So he brought Miss Fortune back, he brought Froggen back and brought Wicked back. So he was able to make you know, SK push the mid lane, push out the bottom, and just stop them from being aggressive and push down another turret or two. So honestly, that was a perfectly well played out uh, job by Herkibot. I mean, it was unfortunate that he, he got caught like that and he had to go that way, but it worked out so well for them. Well, better damage, but not the turret in the end. Which, you know, we'll see if SK can push towards later on. There are a lot of wards down on the map now. See there, Krepo just sticking one down on top of the pink ward. Which, uh, probably going to annoy him when it gets taken away and he'll come back with a pink ward in a little while and get rid of that one. Because he's, I think he's the, the support who hates it the most when his wards get taken down. I, I can I can definitely see that as well. And uh, one thing we need to point out, so you asked me about the mid laners and the items. And I was, I've been thinking about it for a little bit. So you have Froggum, prioritize cooldown reduction with the Merlinomicon because, oh, we see Yuppie getting caught, but cleanses that away. Candy Panda flashing in. Yeah, but Candy Panda is going to keep going for this one here. We see the Blade of the Ruin King there from... Oh, oh what a snipe! 
pro candy panda in the end and well yellow pete tried to dodge it but actually dodged into it that was great bit of play from candy panda and able to get a red buff on top of that and now they're gonna be able to get turret on the bot lane by sk they're trying to stop this blue from being taken they're trying to deny away from froggen but they have a ward there and froggen has his laser available yeah, that laser gonna come in here in a second hercubot does though half his smite so will they just smite it down in the end just to be safe with that one what's going to happen there's a laser kevin going very low here comes the hook match range onto hercubot the box goes down but where's the focus they need to switch it to ocelot which they've done and got the kill in the meantime bottom lane being pushed up kevin gonna try and uh, just distract them actually got a kill on wicked there before he went down but this bottom lane as i said is being pushed up now by Elise and Varus. And just as Evil Genius was forcing SK to react to them, SK's doing the same right here. They're going to get a free turret. Actually, got free two turrets in the bottom lane. Well, not necessarily free since Kenny Panda did kill Yellow Pete, but so well done. I mean, in the end, trading a two for one and two turrets, heavily in favor of SK there. Well, blue buff in the end, of course, was left there. So Frog yeah. it's like, ha, at least I got my blue buff, guys. Not getting that one away from me, which, uh, well, He's just going to add, uh, you know, more towards that build that he's gone with the cooldown reduction as well. Yeah, I'm hesitant to go back into the build because Fence Scare might appear out of nowhere on me. But, you know, so I was going into the build. Frog and he's prioritized cooldown reduction, which is, is smart because look what they're trying to do. If he gets some good good, uh, good cooldown reductions for me to say, his ultimate and Wicked's ultimate will be on such a low cooldown that they are able to fight over and over and over in quick succession. You know, usually teams that are based around, uh, you know, a, a team fight composition, which SK has more of, you need Ocelot's ultimate to be up. So you have Ocelot's ultimate that's at a 100 second cooldown compared to Frog, who's at 39 seconds. So you can get two Lux Lasers off before Ocelot has his ultimate up yet again. So with that whole combination, they're trying to fight as much as possible, just trying to kill them off one by one. And over onto uh, Ocelot's side, goes for the Death Cup, smart item, he needs the AP. Like, he already knows he's, he's behind, he's 0-2 at 3 right now, and he's down 42 CS compared to Frog, and he needs that damage. And as you can see in these fights, it hasn't been doing too much just yet. He doesn't have a mana regen item either, so if Evil Genesis can control his blue buff, he will not be doing too much in fights. And then you talking about the cooldown, you know, it also means that as Lux, you can afford to miss that laser here because it's going to be coming up before right. that shockwave comes back in again. So even if one fight goes bad for you, you know the next time you go in there that you are going to have everything and they're going to have nothing to throw at you. Dragon has been started. Oh, no, he wasn't. He was hitting a ward there. Thought a little bit out of position for Dragon, but it was the ward that he was attacking at the start. There's the vision coming out onto Candy Panda. So EG know what's going on right now. Do have the Oracle with Crepo. He's just going to be trying to clear out the path as he goes through. That's a great light binding. Dragon now has officially been started. REG going to get in there and spoil the party. Laser and they oh, are oh, going to oh. get a steal. It was a smite from Snoopy in the end. He may pay the price here with his life or he may just get pulled out by the lantern. There's the knockback by Crepo. Wicked on the top. There's the binding and the E coming out onto Candy Panda. And SK from what looked like, you know, a dragon and maybe a kill on Snoopy, maybe a second one if they'd have got in there after that, turns into, well, nothing <laughs> for them. They don't get a kill. They lose out on the dragon. Credit to EG. And the teamwork that Evil Genius just showed us right there was ridiculous. Saw the lantern come out for Snoopy. He went in, used it, caught over to Crepo. Then Crepo walked back, played them away. You saw Wicked use his Living Shadow and his E to slow them down. Even so the light button come out of Frog and like that protection squad was just crazy. Yeah, we see that why Thresh really is the flavor of the month. Thank you, Freak, for that. That was, that was pretty good. But we do have the Oracle still on Crepo, as you pointed out, which was a really key factor in that entire fight. They weren't able to clear all the wards in time. That's because SK wanted to force that dragon. But still, that Oracle's going to help out quite a bit. I think Evil Jesus might <laughs> even... just stole that. <laughs> Froggen. Yeah, and that's the danger that's of Froggen's looks. Yeah, he'll steal everything from you. Don't be worried about that one. He gets a red buff here. Uh, obviously, uh, helps a lot out with that dragon. It was Snoopy, though. Credit where it's due, who actually got the smite down right at the end to uh, secure them that dragon. So let's have a look at the overall state of the game here. 3,000 gold, and if you compare, 2,000 is the difference almost between Lux and Orianna, of course, Froggen and Ocelot. Uh, if you look at the AD carries, 7.2 to 8.6. That's on the other side, though, to Candy Panda. You know, I've been sitting this whole time, Joe, trying to think of like a witty comment, and I'm just not as witty as you, I, I realize. But I we think do we've all noticed that by <laughs> I now, I think Jason. we have to. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> um, but Frog, and I mean, he has a death cap now. So he has the same items as Ocelot, but one upped him with that Nomicon with the tier. So that's not a good sign for SK. Frog is just getting stronger and stronger. The CS lead is still ginormous. 42 is still at this point. And even Wicked's been able to like create more of a gap between him and Kevin. Uh, Frog just waiting off here to see if SK decide to push in. 
or a go at that tower thinking well there's only snoopy there we can have a go at this one <laughs> and then all of a sudden you get a full combo from frog and from off the side didn't work out that way though not going to be lured into that one as we see a couple of the big pickups for the ad carries infinity edge for varus and a last whisper from misfortune yeah very center build for a varus player to go for that blade of the rune king and the ie you have the you have the attack speed just from your passive so you don't really need an attack speed item right away not to mention that blade does give you some and of course, over on Yellow Pete's side, with that Last Whisper, with that bl uh, Bloodthirster, his ultimate is going to hurt so much, and he can afford to stay back because he doesn't want to get caught by the Oriana ultimate, or Kevin can jump on him, Herkbat can jump on him. So by powering up that uh, ultimate as much as possible, which he's doing, he can just sit back, not have to worry about it, and give his damage to his team. Yeah, and the last time we saw Shockwave, of course, we you know went back to the whole Mare Wave thing where <laughs> he wasn't really doing too much damage. He couldn't really break even through the shield of uh, Frogger was putting down. Now will be a different thing, though. With those Sorcerer shoes in there, with the Rabadons, with the Blasting One, for example, like, that's going to be a different thing altogether this time around. But again, the placing of it is everything. And Ocelot has to land that. We know he can do it. We've seen him yes. do it before. We've seen him do it against these very five players, in fact in the qualifiers uh, for the LCS uh, all the way back last August in uh, Gamescom here in Cologne as well. You know, we keep talking about EG because they, they're doing so well. Like, they're really far ahead. They have 4, 000, or 3,000 gold lead right now, but we pretty much forgot about Canyon Pattern. He's 3-0 right now. Like, he was able to get the first blood. He was able to get a kill, uh, killer twin lane. He was able to kill Yellow Pete. Like, he is still a very strong force for their team. So if SK can drag the game out a little bit, you know, 10, 15 minutes longer, like, they will have the same amount of damage. Well, not the same amount, but a really good heavy amount of damage if Evil Genesis has. And then they'll have the tankiness on top of that to survive it. Oh, we just saw their wiki going up into this top lane. He's got that two-level advantage over Renekton. Kevin, of course, as that middle outer turret is finally finished off by Candy Panda. Uh, Wicked, you know, a very aggressive Zed build that he's going for here with that Blade of the Ruin King with the Last Whisper straight out. Yeah, I'm actually a, a little surprised he didn't go for a Black Cleaver. I mean, I mean, I can understand you don't want to go for it right away, but that would synergize so well with Yellow Pete since he's going to sit back and bullet time. But the Last Whisper, I mean, if you look over at the opponent, Sunfire Cape on Renekton, he wants to be able to do damage to him. He wants to be able to chew through Shen. And the thing is, we've seen, I think it was Bjergsen do this to Renekton so many times before on, on Zed that you can pretty much kill them like on your own like they could be they could have a random and a sunfire cape and still with that last whisper with the uh, the blade of the ring king you can take them down in one combo wicked is over the top of a pink ward there again candy panda was just waiting off to the side still not a fight that candy panda wants to take doesn't matter if he's 3-0 that zed will kill him at this point yeah so not something that he wants to get involved with without the rest of his team there eg now pushing right up though on towards that inner turret. And keep in mind the level difference we have right now. So you have Wicked who's level 15, you have Frog who's 15. They're one away from getting the rank three ultimate compared to Kevin who's 13 and Ocelot who's 14. So if Evil Genesis can get that those levels onto those two players, they can engage these fights so easily. However, Kenny Penny, he is 15 to 13 of Yellow Pete, so he is staying ahead for his team and they're gonna need him with this 3-0 score to really hold them into this game. Right now, SK pushing down the middle lane. That's forcing EG to back away. One thing that they have for them there in that fact is the Shen, obviously. We, right. we can never underestimate going forward into this game. The longer it stretches out, how important this Shen could be to the whole composition. And look at this SK Gaming clearing out wards. Are they going to go Baron? They could nope. go for it. I mean, they, they, they have potential, but considering what happened last game, I don't think they're going to go for the same trap here. They're just trying to, yeah. just trying to bait EG maybe in here because if they get... You know, uh, Evil Genesis is in a position that they don't want to be in for a fight. They can win it. However, Evil Genesis has been a little, it's been smart here. They're just putting wards down. They still have an Orphan on the Crepo. And of course, Frog, and with that blue buff, he's so scary. You you just, you don't want to fight him at all. There was a hook coming through from Crepo. Actually, uh, just a little bit behind of its target. But here is Herkubot again down in this bottom lane. And AG are going to have to try and keep that push the whole time. But at the same time, what do you do against the Shen? I mean, what do you do? This is what you do, Joe. Wicked, he is strong enough to take him. Like, he can just downright take him in a 1v1. Thing is, he's not sending him down there just yet because they want to stay grouped up just for a little bit longer. As you see, Kevin getting caught, but with that shield out of uh, Ocelot, is able to keep him alive. But the Dragon is taken down. SK is trying to go for a second turret here. Oh, looks actually getting close into here. They're going on towards Froggen. Can he get away? The Shockwave actually didn't come out there. It was a flash that came out from Froggen that completely confused me. Wicked now there, getting himself uh, in a little bit of a tizzy as well as Candy Panda goes low. Can Snoopy get in? There is the Shockwave used to pull Snoopy away. The Lantern is down and Snoopy will get pulled back to safety. The Flay comes in onto Kevin. He's still chasing though as Wicked comes off from the side and Wicked 
not really going in for the damage there. The hook landed onto Hercule Bot in the end, but that's a two for zero there for SK Gaming. That's just what the doctor ordered at this point. And that's just right up what we said about them being at Baron with that arrow code. Like, could they potentially go for it? They did in the end, but they were trying to get Evil Jesus caught out in a position that they could win the fight. And we, they showed right there that they still have what it takes to win these fights. They got Froggen locked down completely. They just shut him down. Froggen, I mean, he's he ultimate. Got caught. He got, yeah, he got caught, but he uses ultimate only on the Kevin, which might be a little different if you can hit a couple more members of SK. But still, just like I said, that's what the doctor ordered. SK can easily get back in this game. They have a Void Staff now done on Asa. That's going to help him out so much. And uh, of course, more wards being picked up and more items being developed as well. Candy Panda has a zeal, so it's going to go for, it looks like, a Phantom Dancer. I'm like crossing my fingers, but I see the dagger there, so I'm like pretty sure it's gonna be a fan answer. <laughs> well, we have the Rooney Bulwark added in there as well for Snoopy right now, which is only gonna be adding more protection to this EG lineup. And that's what SK can do, you know, even if they just get every five minutes they manage to catch someone out like that, that's always gonna be a start for you. The problem that they do have overall though is this farm. Only Candy Panda is ahead there. Obviously, he does have that kill lead as well. But look at the top, 245 to 157, 259 to 201 in the middle. And that's, you know, around about 1,000 gold in the top lane, 2,000 in the middle lane. If you look at the AD carries, though, it's 1,500 in favor of Candy Panda. But that means that he is then the prime target right now. But it's all based around composition. So you've seen Evil Jesus. They've had quite a, a huge lead this entire game. Well, not obviously in the beginning, but they have a pretty good lead for the entirety of the game. But they haven't pushed towers as a team. They haven't tried to go under the turret to try to dive in and pick up kills because their comp is based around catching someone off guard, catching them out in the jungle, and killing them right away, then having a 5v4 fight. SK, they're about team fighting. They have a great composition to stop anyone from EG even hitting their turret since, you know, a Misfortune doesn't have an escape, doesn't have um, that range to really hit the turret down. So SK, they're playing it perfectly. Like, they're just keeping up and farm as much as possible. They're not letting any objectives go down anymore in terms of turrets, and they're going to get to that point where they're strong enough to just go for a head-on-head -head fight. So you talked earlier on about the whole Black Cleaver situation with Wicked. He's now added that in there as well. As we are going to see the Lantern pull. Gets Froggen back towards that middle lane a little bit quicker than him walking around the side. So quieting up, uh, quietening up a little bit now in this game. Herkubot, as you'd expect, is continuing to push down this bottom lane. Escape grouping with the rest of them towards the middle. Froggen actually oh. is going to land a combo here on towards Nif. And look at that. Almost finished off there. Very, very close to going down. Wow, that was so insanely close. And if Froggen is able to pick up a Void Staff, which is nowhere near at this point, it, like, the thing is, it, Obviously, you don't want to go for a support to one shot, but you do want to make it a 5v4 situation. And if Nif's able to survive, that means Candy Panda should be able to survive it as well. And that's not a good sign for Evil Geniuses. Yeah, and also, you can't underestimate the damage it at least puts out anyway, right. plus the crowd control that she's got. So, you know, it, it, it kills a kill at the end of the day. And if it puts you in a 5v4, you'd happily take that one. EG now looking to finally group up and go for a turret. It's going to be the inner middle turret here with Wicked already in there. That's not going to survive for very long. Nice pick up from EG. The laser going to get rid of the minions as well as we are going to see the hook landing here on towards Ocelot. Chain of Corruption comes down. The box will come out, but Crepo already dying there. And that Chain of Corruption moving right to the back line here. There's the shockwave coming down. And SK losing a couple of men here. EG had signed to chase them down. Shen is down. Varus is down. Renekton is down. Ocelot is the only one left alive. And it looked, you know, with that with that um, shockwave that actually hit quite a few of them, I thought that could have been a turning point. But it just wasn't. EG managed to keep that sustained damage going. Yeah, that, that shield out of frog and is just so much damage that you absorb for the entire team. And it was a good fight by both teams overall, but SK, they just didn't have that little oomph they needed to take down Evil Geniuses. Too many carries were stayed alive, or kept alive. Krepo was the only one to go down, and they blew a lot on that support uh, particularly, but that's a luxury that Evil Geniuses have it, with that blue buff and that Merlin Namacon Lux. Yeah. And actually should be on uh, a decent chunk of gold after everything uh, is said and done there. And here we see double Bloodthirsters coming out for Yellow P. Two Bloodthirsters plus the last Whisper coming in. As Jason has to write his jokes down on a piece of paper <laughs> for me to get him. I just don't expect them out of you, Jason. I That's to, why I was trying to not I make it awkward. Serene. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I but it. it did anyways. <laughs> but as I said before, items are developing a little bit more. We have Asa picked up Home Guard boots and a chalice. So looks like he might turn that into a Thieves and Holy Grail, getting some much needed cool direction. But Nep getting caught. He has the Oracle and he's not there anymore. I think Trevor's noise for this one is poof. And that's exactly what just happened to Nif there. Ocelot. 
had to get away from it as well. And EG, they're going up towards Baron here. They've got all five men there. They've got an Oracle on Crepo to clear out. Not that there's any vision there from SK's side of things to be cleared. And EG going to start things off. We are going to see SK come and try and react to this one. Are we going to see a bit of deja vu? I love where the position Frog is in. If you can check on him real quick, because he's trying to zone them quite well. And if he catches Candy Panda, he's going to one-shot him completely. Well, that uh, Baron is going to be going down here. Evil Genie says we'll secure that one. Are we going to see a binding la uh, latch on to Kevin? No, nope, not quite. We'll get hit there with the lucid singularity, but that's not going to be enough, of course, at this stage to really be doing too much to him. But that's a vital pickup now. We saw it in the last game. It can always be a risky play to go in for yes, Baron, but without Nif, without the, you know, as soon as Nif goes down, you automatically think, well, they're probably not going to have many wards at mm -hmm. least, if any, uh, which was in fact the case by the end. And look at the vision they had around Baron anyways. They had four wards down completely. Yeah. It's like lit up completely, like they, that's their side of the jungle or something. They had all that vision around. No one at SK could even get close, and Froggen was in position to snipe them if they even tried. So good job at SK. We saw Froggen actually back. Foley bought a Void Staff. Full out. Uh, so that is not a good sign for SK. And of course, uh, Wicked as well. Picks up a BF Sword, so he's going for his Bloodthirster, which is going to make it so he can one-shot them even easier now. And look at uh, Yellow Peep, taking a, a little play from Genja there with the double Bloodthirsters. Yeah, good old double Bloodthirsters. We have over on the other side, the uh, Phantom Dancer now completed for Candy Panda as well. But we saw, and, and that is the problem really for Candy Panda, that he's got, along with the Renekton, half the kills that SK have. If he gets hit with a light band, he's dead. Right, he's dead. And then also, they have another problem on top of that is, how are they going to get to Yellow Pete? So with those double Bloodthirsters, as we are saying before, he just wants to use that ultimate. Because he wants to stay out of range of that Ocelot, uh, I can't remember the name, uh, whatever it is, the ultimate out of Oriana. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, the Mev Wave. Forgot about that. He wants to stay out of range of that. So with the double Bloodthirsters, that's going to give him that damage he needs to just shred through the entire enemy team. You saw him almost one shot even nip at that point, and look at Whoa. that damage. That's just one. And oh, a laser, God. and no one's got any health left anymore. Uh, Candy Panda almost said, Nif almost said, Kevin now left to defend this top tower all alone. And uh, to be honest, he's not going to be able to do so. All five men from EG are there. The shield is massive coming out of Frogon. The inhibitor is going to go down as well. Obviously, that's the second one now. The bottom one was taken earlier on, and now they're just going to go back. They're going to go tutorial style, as you'd expect, coming out of Evil Geniuses, back to that inner turret and try and get rid of that third and final inhib. The thing is, we talk about you know Shen split pushing. He's been doing this entire time, but yeah, look how slow he is at it. it done, yeah. Exactly. He's too slow at it right now. The Sun Fire Cape helps, but he needs some sort of attack speed. He's not applying pressure anywhere. The thing is, he needs to be here for the, for this team. Like He's the only one, him and Renekton, that can really stop Evil Geniuses from pushing in terms of taunting him on the turret. We see Ocelot getting caught. Here we go. Bullet time! Oh, the my. shockwave came down, but it really didn't help out whatsoever. Candy Panda's gonna die that was just ridiculous i'm pretty sure it's illegal in some countries right there what just happened that was just crazy they're gonna take another inhibitor they're gonna take another inhibitor three of them down with 50 seconds left on sk it looks like evil jesus will close out the series yeah third and final inhibitor goes down it's only hercule and nif left alive from this one and nif is actually up in the tribush on the top side not even bothering to recall at this point that is going to be the nexus going down and the victory here for evil geniuses they will be your third place team here in the lcs europe spring split playoffs with a 2-0 win over sk gaming well played they really have to feel good about that I mean, with all the chores they have throughout the entire of lcs you know just not uh, they're like 12 and 13 uh, halfway through or at the end of it to come back in fourth place and beat sk gaming who was third place by a mile just has to feel so great yeah, and that fu that finisher there at the end as well. There was, it was SK. Now you see him. Now you don't. That's what <laughs> happened to SK in those dying moments of the matchup. And really, really strong performance from EG overall. They can be very happy with this. Uh, since we had, you know, the top four seeds from the LCS coming in to the top two in the final and the third and fourth in the semi in the sorry, the third place game, I should say. Um, I think EG. This means a lot to them yeah. to, you know, be SK Gaming who did finish third in the overall standings from the spring splits.